So, uh, so good morning, everybody. I didn't really know who is going to be the audience. So here, the first thing I would like to tell you that this is just a starting point, an outline, what I have here on the computer. And uh, I would like to keep the majority of this, uh, of this time for discussions and questions, because probably throughout the questions we would uh, get to the point where you would like to be. No, I see many, many famili familiar uh, faces, so please uh, do ask me questions because you probably would like to know more that I have here on the pages. Maybe somebody would like to have other uh, directions. So here, this is how I think to do it. Uh, the first part is, might be a little tedious for many of you. I don't know, please uh, raise your hands if all these numbers are too uh, easy for you. So Vomex is a yearly organized festival. It's in October. And uh, it has four or five uh, territories that are important. Uh, beside the fact that it's about and mainly so-called word music. And uh, uh, I think it's a distinguishing factor that uh, it's not only has the festival part, but also has uh, during the day a trade fair and conference, which is a very good uh, platform for uh, sharing ideas and uh, going home uh, with new new ideas. Uh, I always go home with a list of new ideas that I would like to uh, do in the ne next couple of years, and not too many of them finally get, be, get, get done, but one of them, Vomex, has been done. So, <laughs> uh, About the music festival, it's mainly a talent festival in many different uh, layers. Some of you have been uh, doing uh, a selection for the Vomex uh, lineup. You know that uh, a talent can mean several things. A new face, or a new show, or a new market uh, introduction. There are several uh, possibilities. And the lineup finally gets very interesting in most of the cases, or if we can hear it. I mean, if the sound quality is good enough for that. So, you didn't raise up your hands, but I think you know most of it. And some some pictures or photos that uh, kind of show all these areas. Uh, the uh, trade fair, the festival, the idea sharing, the sun, the cafes. Uh, and here we go towards the direction of the effect of uh, Vomex in Central Europe that uh, Budapest is among the cities that would like to develop its conference uh, market. But this, this size of a conference is unique as well in Budapest. So uh, many institutions were uh, taking part in organizing this conference because there were 3,000 delegates, or I mean 3,000 uh, person, out of which 2,500 were registrants, another 500 musicians. So 3,000 people is a lot uh, to, uh, uh, to facilitate in, uh, in, in uh, trade fairs, in venues. So uh, Budapest was facing difficulties to put all these people under one, one roof. And you saw finally we couldn't put them under one roof. The daytime venue and the nighttime venue was in two different places, very f fortunately very close to each other. 
uh, these numbers which you, sh which you see here, we normally uh, show to decision makers that 500 or 800, I don't know, yeah, 300 journalists is an important fact for decision makers because most of the European uh, uh, formal uh, news market or media market is covered by these amount of uh, journalists. So it's very important. It's very important for a small country like Hungary. Uh, it's very important for a city that would like to uh, attract more and more tourists and more and more conference uh, delegates. Some photos about the night, night venues. Uh, here I about the here I would like to grab the opportunity that... Uh, no, I'm going to come back to this later, sorry. So, uh, for artists, managers and... Uh, and... Uh, uh, promoters, booking agents, uh, export offices in Central Europe the main problem is that we are facing difficulties uh, in marketing our, uh, our art uh, or the cultural market. We don't have export offices, we don't have regular subsidies, we don't have institutions. And the network what we had in the Soviet or the communist era, we have lost mostly among the countries. So, um, building up uh, common brands, building up uh, uh, common uh, acts, initiatives in the region was very difficult. And uh, we saw in Thessaloniki a few years ago that the Balkan stage faced a lot of difficulties of finding enough resources to finance the, the global Balkan stage. Uh, on the other hand, it's difficult to get to be showcased because uh, uh, Vomex uh, artists, showcased artists, have a lot of support from other uh, institutions like export offices in all over Western Europe is supporting uh, showcases. Meanwhile, Central or Eastern Europe doesn't. And the promotional or manager management background is also mainly missing in these countries. So we wanted to make a, uh, a regional showcase uh, under Vomex, and to to able to reach that objective, we started a few years earlier to talk to countries and talk to persons uh, who can initiate this pro process in their countries to have uh, bands from the region that have support, that have background, that have management. Uh, I collected some uh, numbers that show how difficult it is to get on the market from Eastern Europe, from Central Europe. Um, and in the first column you see that how many artists has been showcased uh, in early one and a half decade in Europe. Uh, and uh, the Hungarian number is quite out, um, outraging from the, from the averages. But in 15 years, we only had 13 Hungarian brands, bands from Hungary. So it means yearly one band from Hungary. And this Vomex in Budapest seemed to be a unique opportunity to, to have a visual effect on the market, to have at least two Hungarian bands at the same, on the same Vomex. Slovak Republic didn't have any showcased artist. Poland has five in 15 years. Czech Republic also had one, and Austria had six. So altogether, we had an average of two bands per year, this region, 
from the region, which was quite a low number compared to other countries. So the main objective of, of this WOMAX was to at least to dupli duplicate this number. And I think uh, at least one figure shows this, that we have reached that, that the showcase artists from the region was around 10, which is quite a lot of number. And also if you compare it to the total number of the showcases, which is 60 in one year, so I think th we did a, a very good effect on the market and when you were uh, passing by the trade fairs, the stands and you, when you, when you talk, talk to other people from, uh, from the Womack Seekens, you felt that impression that uh, Central Europe is, is having some music, it, it's having some uh, artistry, it's having some, something to, to watch, to listen to. So uh, this was the main, one of the main uh, objectives we had. We had another objective is to, I didn't bring any numbers from it, but uh, we had, uh, in every year there is 1,000 uh, applicants for the showcase and the uh, jury, the seven summarize, is facing a lot of difficulties to get through on all these 1,000 uh, uh, applications and certainly 60 is, uh, seems to be a lot, but if you go by continents and countries, uh, the, these 60 slots are easily uh, filled up by common faces, uh, interesting uh, old artists, I mean old in the sense that very well known artists. So it's difficult to get a new face from an unknown region into the showcase. So uh, where, where is where I wanted to go? Uh, on the other hand, when you see the, ah yes, and this is what I wanted to say, that. Uh, last year, for example, from Slovakia alone, there was 10 applicants. In Hungary, from Hungary, there were 60 applicants. And in the previous region, uh, pre uh, previous uh, uh, periods, there was none Slovakian uh, applicant, there was none applicants from the region, very few. Uh, it, it, it was difficult, but uh, with this campaign that we did together with Peter, Jan, Vladimir and all the, all the rest, Zlata and all the rest who is here, it was, we could reach that the number of applicants has gone up tremendously. So it was much easier to select from this number of artists. Another trend which we wanted to get in Vomax is to have more uh, delegates from the region because of the travels and everything. And I think I was just going through yesterday the, the names that has been uh, uh, registered for last year Vomax. Colors of Ostrava had at least eight people when they normally only have two or three. So the, uh, the number of people from the region has been at least doubled. I know that Bogdan was having lots of his colleagues with him, Boyan, and everybody was taking at least a car full of, of uh, colleagues. And it was, it was, it could have been, it could, could be seen on the, on the trade fair as well. So we saw many uh, familiar faces that we normally don't see on Bomexes. So I think it was another important uh, uh, element of this uh, Vomex that it was a good opportunity to meet for us, to meet, to meet each other. Any artists here? Any musician? Thank you, Andrew. Okay. Did you mention the pre-Omex showcase what you had the night before? 
Ah, yes, you're right. How many bands played there? Another ten, you're right. But that's uh, not official Vomax thing. Yes, you're right. Those were local. Um, yes, so the the time frame was uh, that in February we did uh, a weekend where we invited around 100 or 200 uh, Hungarian uh, promoters, musicians, agents to prepare for. Uh, 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 constructing and uh, designing applications for the Vomex showcase. Petr Dorushka was there, Amira was there, uh, uh, Draghi was there, yes, and uh, Simon Broughton was there. And we were discussing um, issues like what is the how do you propose an, an application for a showcase? What are the main elements you have to have? And we invited uh, Peter and and uh, and and uh, Amira and all the others to give an external opinion about Hungarian bands. We had a few showcases as well uh, that that night that they tell their opinion to the Hungarians that what is what they see interesting from our music or from our performances. And uh, we did uh, uh, mm, speed dating and various forms of, uh, of get together with professionals. And then this is why we had more than 60 applications uh, on, on the Vomex uh, showcases, because from these 300, or 200, I don't know how many, but it was a lot, a lot of people, many date proposals. And um, one of the things I haven't shown you in numbers is, uh, is that we had, uh, in the official showcase, we had three bands plus a DJ, so let's say uh, three bands, and I haven't told you what is their uh, uh, result in, in uh, festivals, gigs, let's say export sales. And the reason for this, why I haven't told you, is that uh, before we talked, before we uh, organized Vomex, we talked to many, many promoters who is doing proposals for two decades, like Ellen James and others. And they always tell us that don't be scared, be prepared that your first time investment in Vomex doesn't turn back in the next first year. There has to be more time uh, taken and spent and more investment done until you get some result on the professional market. In spite of this, Romengo, one of uh, the showcased artists on the opening, had quite a good uh, uh, feedback and result. They went uh, many festivals from Barden Treffen through to to uh, this this uh, for the folk Korea. India and several places. So Romengo has filled up his calendar with uh, with um, um, with the result of Formex. Others have less effect on the international market, but has a real effect on the Hungarian market. These bands started to make much more gigs on the Hungarian festival market because the f festival scene which is outside of, of the world music, uh, the big festivals like Vault and uh, others started to invite these kind of bands that has been showcased the on Vomex. So they had a good feedback from, from our own Hungarian market. Uh, and um, what I always would like to tell musicians that uh, yesterday we see many good performances and I'm sure that uh, 
we saw that musicians are professional on, on the stage. But on Vomex, you have to prove that you have a full uh, team of professionals behind you that can ease up marketing, that can ease up uh, communication, and, uh, and, and who can deliver the message you want to say. So that's for artists. We can come back to this later if you want. Yeah, like the aims, that what is your aim? Uh, who are you talking to? What is your uh, tools that you would like to use? And, uh, and um, this is a triangle that we always facing difficulties to put through in among 2,500 delegates. So in Vomex, you meet a lot of person. Uh, it's very difficult to target and and uh, shorten, or how you say, uh, to focus your uh, your target to several people that you invest your time, that you invest your, that you develop your message, and so on and so on. Uh, And one final, uh, mar uh, final uh, remark before I go on to, to the last result of Womex is that Womex is normally not only uh, a festival or a trade fair where you have to invest a lot of money on, on registered uh, trade fair. You have other options. You can buy tickets to the festival, and you can meet up some people during the night time venue. You can only use the, uh, the electrical, electric resources, the, um, how is it called, the Vomex, uh, sorry? Virtual Vomex, thank you, the database, because you, if you invest only in the database to buy the database, you've got a lot of contacts. So think about your investment, and even think more now when we know that Katowice is coming, that you don't have to take the band next year to Santiago de Compostela, which is quite difficult from here, and a lot of time and money to get there. But Katowice is closed, so probably they're going to have another a similar setup that the night time showcases will be open for the public. So try to get the tickets there, and you don't have to register for Chileans of uh, euros for the for the registration. So there are many ways how you can build up your investment. Either you invest to the showcase, either you invest on good communication materials, or you just start to meet people in the first year in Katowice. You just get together with the, with the small amount of the professionals during the night time because Vomex is an open open uh, community. You can talk to everybody. That's one of the main differences compared to medium or other uh, big uh, professional markets. One of the results which I didn't have time to put here is, is, is our um, uh, next endeavor, which is between 13th and 16th of October which is a world music festival in Budapest, which includes uh, a few showcases, around eight, four from Hungary and four from the region, and another 25 or 28 uh, uh, artists from around the world. And we are very happy that Budapest finally uh, has a world music festival and this is thanks to, to Vomex, because the Hungarian market just uh, has been surprised. The Hungarian audience has been surprised that bird music is something totally different to the genres that, that they had in mind. They, they started to understand and started to enjoy a festival that is open in, uh, in ideas, that is open to to, to new, new cultures, new colors, uh, familiar faces, friendly people. 
So we are working a lot on that. Uh, at the time, we just started to design the festival in May when we got our first ideas about the budget that we can spend on this festival. But uh, please visit our website. It's called Budapest Ritmo. Budapest is Budapest, Ritmo is Ritmo. And please uh, have a look on the conference lineup. It's free registration. And we've got uh, 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 conference themes like uh, music and tourism, which is about how do you uh, uh, convince your uh, tourism industry that music is a common language for throughout the world. Music and export, music and culture. So what is music has to do on the cultural market? Why music is important? Bec we know, all of us know that music attracts a lot of people. We know that festival is attracting a lot of people. But in our region, these questions are not always obvious for the decision makers. Uh, music and UNESCO. UNESCO has a lot, of, a lot to do on the cultural market and we try to uh, put this topic on, uh, on the table of the decision makers. What else do we have? Uh, uh, internal relationships for funding uh, in the region and uh, bar talk and uh, his effect on the world music on the market, on the repertoire, on, uh, on the community, and so on and so on. So please have a look, try to get to Budapest. I try to send you some invitations that you have the direct link, many of you, who, whom I didn't, please give me your card and I'm going to send you the, the formal. Could you say once more the website is Budapest? R-Y-T-M-O? Yes, dot H-U. So please, me your, please give me your visiting card and I send you an email. Thank you. And <laughs> please raise your questions. Yes, we do have time for a couple of questions now, so please. Mm -hmm. Oh, the translator. Hello. Uh, yeah, is there anything you would do another way? What did you learn from the like organizing such a big event? Is there something? There are some uh, things that we have learned, but uh, they are not public. I would not like to share it with you. So it's not not a, it's not about you guys uh, that we would like to change. And uh, uh, certainly there are a lot of things that could have been done better, but uh, Central Europe is a different world to uh, the Western world. So we have faced a lot of changes throughout uh, uh, organizing Vomax. Yes. Yes, uh, Jörg. Okay, I want to ask, Andras, you probably, not probably, I'm sure you know very well the Slovak music scene. So, I, I'm sure about that. So, I would like to know, uh, what do you think about the musicians of the Slovak world music scene? And uh, what would you advise them? Uh, what is your advice for Slovak musicians to be famous, okay, to, to get to some successful uh, touring abroad, or what would you advise, or what would you say to them to encourage them to try this? Because I think some of them uh, are satisfied with their career in Slovakia. So, have you anything to say about this to them? Uh, I was, uh, I didn't know too much about the. So, starting from the beginning, I know that. Uh, Slovak and Czech musicians has a huge effect on uh, on the Central European 
musician scene because for example on Hungary on the first uh, musicians were all uh, uh, from Slovakia and Czechia and they were invited by churches and episcop episcopals and so on and so on so we know that uh, musicians has a huge tradition uh, I think Poland is also similar in this sense that uh, we, in Hungary we didn't know too much about Czech and Slovak and Polish musicians and uh, about the music scene. We knew that there was a huge underground in, in Czechoslovakia, we knew that there was a huge jazz life in Poland, but when the fall of the Berlin Wall we lost all the ties. So information has stopped to get through the borders. And uh, we started to realize from Hungary a few years ago that Poland has a great uh, uh, musical scene. And I think uh, Womack started to see that. I mean the audience of Womack, because we only knew uh, Warsaw Village Band. I think they were showcased around uh, 2005 or six or something like that. And in the beginnings of 2010 uh, or something like that, that Polish band started to come up to, to the, the Womax lineup. And then when I went to uh, Warsaw to, to the Crossroads or Cross Culture, Cross Culture Festival, I saw so many bands uh, of off stage, off cross culture, off whatsoever, that we were amazed how many good bands there are. And I think it's because of the of the of the Polish uh, Polish subsidy and market that many many clubs started to work again, and we see that there are more and more clubs and there are new and new bands coming up with new ideas. Coming back to the Slovakians. I still see a lot of faces in different bands. So I gather that the uh, best musicians are playing in, in many bands and they, I think that their calendar must be filled up with a lot of gigs and they have coordination problems to uh, uh, free up their calendar. This, is, this can be one of the, one of the basic points that uh, uh, musician has to musicians has to be encouraged encouraged to 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 get new bands and new 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 shows and new uh, uh, new repertoires. For example, yesterday I talked to Martin, I think, and he said that uh, they started to work again uh, half a year ago. So they started to develop their repertoire again half a year ago and we saw them yesterday that they have a great uh, repertoire already so probably in one year they're going to have a, a great uh, repertoire if they keep working so uh, probably they have a chance if they can uh, really have a very tight repertoire uh, that is apt, apt for the market so encouragement, encouragement.